Hi, thanks for joining us. Uh, you're joining me, Steve Hayes from Element uh, Technology, Technical Director within the business unit uh, we call Connected Technology. Introduce my colleague, Michael. Hi there, I'm Michael Darby, and Steve and I are both technical directors in our Connected Technology division, which means we deal with anything radio enabled. This will be a short video, probably about 20 minutes or less, um, but hopefully something informative in there for you. Great, thanks Michael. Yeah, and uh, I mean actually this is the first of uh, many videos that we're going to do on a regular basis. Just really recapping, highlighting some of the industry topics, hot topics, uh, new things that are coming up. Things really that uh, will affect product compliance going forward. Maybe because of new technology, maybe because of change in regulations, maybe because uh, there's new standards coming along. So the idea was that we would just uh, have a conversation here, as Michael said, probably not long, maybe 20 minutes or so, just really recapping some of the topics. And we thought to start with, and to kick this off, uh, we'd look back on 2021, see some of the things that we uh, were involved in, some of the discussions and forums that we got involved in. And I guess, really, um, we're addressing two main markets, really, or two main regulatory bodies. There's the European side of things, um, and there's a forum that they were quite heavily involved in, Red CA, we'll get into that in just a moment. Uh, and then also on the US side and, and North America, where um, another acronym coming along, TCB Council, um, where, again, it, it's the US equivalent of the Red CA in terms of industry forum, where uh, these topics are talked about and debated. So let's get into it, Michael. Um, let's start with the European side then, the Red CA. Um, I mentioned that there's lots of acronyms in our industry, so uh, why don't you kick us off and uh, explain what the Red CA is and, and, and who it's for. Yeah, sure. So the Red CA, Radio Equipment Directive Compliance Association. Uh, it's a group primarily set up for Radio Equipment Directive notified bodies, but anyone can be a member. We have notified bodies, manufacturers, test labs, even single person consultants. They meet twice a year because of COVID, we've been meeting online. In the past, they were often uh, a physical meeting. It's really where everything happens. So the European Commission attends, Etsy attends, uh, European market surveillance groups attend. Uh, we go there to learn our trade and find out what we need to do, but it's also a really good way to see which way the industry is going and uh, see which way the wind blows, if you like. Now, there's a lot that's been going on in the last couple of years, but if I look back on 2021, there's not really been too much in the way of regulation changes. Radio Equipment Directive has existed since uh, 2016. It's been in, uh, in use since. Um, there are some new delegated acts which call in some new requirements, and maybe we'll cover that in our next video. But really, one of the big topics we've seen taking place is the introduction or the explanation, if you like, of risk in compliance. Now, this may seem strange when you say regulatory compliance. You know, these words, regulatory compliance, these, the, you don't, the word risk doesn't jump out at you. The words like risk and choice and decision don't come out at you when you hear regulatory compliance. You just think, well, this is what I must do. But actually, certainly in the European approach, there's a lot of scope for risk and decision and choice. And that's because you are issuing a declaration of conformity to a radio equipment to each individual unit that leaves the factory to be placed on the market. Typically, you're gonna to test the standards. We refer to them as harmonized standards or published standards, um, or even draft standards. Whatever route you take, you'll end up signing a declaration to say that it meets the directive. The manufacturer's risk assessment has really been a, an important topic of conversation on the last few meetings, and certainly in 2021. And we've been heavily involved in writing the Red CA's technical guidance note on risk assessments. Actually, the technical guidance note did already exist. It was drafted by another group of notified bodies, and it's been in use and well received for a few years now. But it was Having been in use for a while, it was ready for a refresh. Not because anything was wrong with it, just because we've been using it for a while, uh, and so it's time to feed back into it. So we've been uh, responsible for looking at that, and with another group of notified bodies, we've managed to get that TGN freshened up, uh, TGN, Technical Guidance Note. 
uh, and it's technical guidance note 30. And um, it even includes an annex now, which uh, maybe it's wrong to call it a checklist as such, but it's more like a, a list of topics that you might want to consider as a manufacturer. A lot of manufacturers struggle with the term risk assessment, especially if you're used to testing safety standards, where a risk analysis of the safety is a critical part of it, um, and you're looking at the risk of safety issues. Whereas the, the Ready Equipment Directive's risk assessment is more of a, a risk of non-compliance with the directive. And so I would say in the last year, that's been quite an important topic. Uh, really looking at what decisions must a manufacturer make if they test to a standard. For example, if the standard isn't harmonized, then the manufacturer has to justify why did they choose to do that. If you have a harmonized standard, we use the term presumption of conformity, where the manufacturer can presume that they comply and it's up to somebody else to convince them otherwise. Whereas if you don't have this presumption of conformity, then the manufacturer has to go an extra step or two to explain why they feel they comply with the radio equipment directive. Uh, and so this has really been a, a quite a significant topic for 2021, I would say. Mm. And what other hot topics are there in Red CA? What else was debated during 2021? So another big uh, topic of conversation has been radio equipment into vehicles. And this is a, an important point for Element, and in fact Steve has been the author of a document. Um, it's planned to be a technical guidance note, uh, but it's not finished yet. So at the moment it's recorded as a reference document, uh, which means that it has been published, um, but it is not a formal guidance note as yet. Uh, and this deals with what you must do if you put radio equipment into a vehicle. Very relevant for Element because of course we have automotive testing and we have a lot of radio testing and certification as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's a lot of risk involved in that. Of course, again, you might say, well, if I'm just putting a radio into a vehicle, that's been happening for years. Surely the requirements must be very clear. Um, why on earth do I need guidance? And the fact is you do need guidance because it isn't completely clear. Absolutely. And then I, I guess linked to that then, and, and some of the other discussions in the Red CA surround this whole issue of risk. Um, there was a thing called the, the James Elliott case, wasn't there? Um, and, and actually it, it resulted in a court case, um, which is why it is referred to as the James Elliott case as the two um, uh, interested parties in, in that. I don't think we've got time for getting into that now. But the whole thing that came from that was legal certainty. And, and this is really the awkward and difficult part for standards bodies where, um, from a legal point of view, there needs to be certainty. And yet there are options in standards. There is ambiguity in standards. And I think really that's resulted in, in quite significant delays in publication of these things, these harmonised standards that you're referring to. Um, and, and probably a frustration of many manufacturers around the world asking where all of these harmonised standards are. Um, and the root cause of it is this legal certainty, making sure that there is no ambiguity in the standard itself. There is absolute technical certainty to ensure consistency of approach and application of the standard, um, and thereby way of demonstrating um, uh, presumption of conformity to the, the essential requirements themselves. Yeah, yeah, I think if you look at the um, harmonised standard list back under the old RMTTE directive, you had radio standards, safety standards and EMC standards all listed with no problem. And they were kind of known as an engineer's test procedure, really. That was what they were for. Whereas now we have this requirement for legal certainty under the Radio Equipment Directive, you see a lot of radio standards listed, measure the output power, if it's less than its value, you pass. But with EMC and safety, it's a little bit more tricky. You have the EMC performance criteria. Are you happy with that result? Are you not happy? Is the product still working as it's meant to? Did you test it the same as your competitor tested theirs? And safety is often hazard-based or based on the, uh, the risk of how the product is being used, it becomes much more difficult for the European Commission to list those standards and state, if you've met this standard, then it gives a legal certainty of compliance with the directive. And that's why those standards are not harmonised. Mm.
Yeah, great. And then I guess, I mean, other topics that um, were hot in 2021 and continue to be in 2022, right, is things like these new delegated acts. Yes. Um, what sort of things are they covering in delegated acts? So, yeah, the first one coming in, uh, in fact, in March 2022, is the requirement that all smartphones must be able to make an emergency call. Um, like uh, in the UK, we were dialed 999, but it's 112 is the international calling number. Um, as such, that you must be able to make a call from your mobile phone and the emergency services would know where you are. There isn't a harmonised standard for this, um, but there's a delegated act and the manufacturers have to, at the moment, justify how they meet that. Another thing that's coming along and a delegated act has been uh, uh, put out but uh, isn't really enforced yet, um, are some new requirements with regard to cyber security and fraud and, and uh, protection of property, for example. Uh, I think that's something for another webinar. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think we've got at least a couple of years to get ready for that. Yes. Um, but, but certainly it's on the horizon um, and, and coming along. Uh, so, so, yeah. We said that um, there's things in here for, for not just Europe, but uh, North America as well. Um, so why don't we get into that side of things then, the FCC, uh, TCB Council, two acronyms again, why don't you just give us a, a quick overview of the relationship between TCB Council, FCC, uh, and then maybe some of the, the hot topics. Yeah, sure, so in the USA, the spectrum regulator is the FCC, and a certification body is known as a TCB, Telecommunications Certification Body. And there's the group of TCBs, we know, call ourselves the TCB Council. We meet twice a year at a training workshop. And again, anyone can attend that. TCBs, manufacturers, consultants. Um, and always this is a training event, very useful. So what do we see in 2021? Well, interestingly, I would say, again, there was a kind of focus on risk in that, um, for example, some key topics installing certified radio modules into end products. Um, I think a whole video could be spent on that topic, but basically, if you install a certified radio module into an end product, you don't have to recertify the product because the certification part has already been done. But that doesn't mean you don't have to retest. You, testing and certification are two very different topics, and uh, that's, that's for another day. But um, how much testing must you do when installing a, a certified module? Well, that ends up coming down to the manufacturer's risk and decision based on the type of module, the pass or fail limit of the module, the results of the module, um, and the manufacturer's appetite for risk, of course. Mm -hmm. And things like um, testing of mobile phones for SAR or RF exposure, um, I heard the FCC use the expression reasonably foreseen use, which is a term that we know from the Radio Equipment Directive, and so interesting to hear the FCC say that. So the FCC, though, last year, I had two different messages. On the one hand, the message of manufacturer taking responsibility, understanding their uh, legal responsibilities and handling it. On the other side, though, the FCC really made a big point about how the correct testing approach is part of the authorization. In Europe, the manufacturer will assess their product and then choose to sign their declaration of conformity. In the USA, there isn't a declaration of conformity document you sign. Even if you follow the SDOC route, it's an authorization procedure. And if you test for the FCC and you don't test exactly correctly, your authorization is invalid. And so the FCC have been sending us a very clear message that the test lab, certification body, or the manufacturer can't start going off and doing their own assessment or changing the, the test methods and expect everything to be all right. It's a clear way of testing. You must test it that way or your authorization doesn't apply. Actually. Yeah, I was just going to pick up on that, actually, because I think that, that fundamentally highlights the difference between the two regions. FCC, very stringent in terms of the rules and the compliance to the rules, whereas in Europe, it's almost the essential requirement of a directive is an aspiration. It's a legal requirement, but it really is a high level objective of what the point of the directive is, and then gives the manufacturer flexibility in terms of how they demonstrate compliance to 
that, that high level uh, objective. The USA approach is very much here are the rules, you must follow the rules. Um, and whereas the European approach is more like here is the end goal, do what you need to do to get to it. Yeah. Great. Okay, well, we said we'll keep this video uh, relatively short. Um, we'll um, plan to do regular updates uh, over the video. Looking ahead to 2021, we've got Red CA and TCB Council meetings that uh, we mentioned coming up. They're, they're in the spring of this year. We'll report back after those uh, meetings, let you know what the hot topics were, what was discussed, um, and maybe get into some of the technical details of those. Like I say, we're running a series of these uh, uh, short videos just to really provide updates and feedback to you uh, in the industry of the, the things that are coming along that will affect compliance uh, of products, not, both, uh, not just in, in North America or Europe, but, but certainly both regions. So look out for that next time and uh, look forward to seeing you then. Cheers. Cheers.